In the headlines, Kaduna State Government directs emergency action on diphtheria following death of six children. Firewood and charcoal price go high in Adamawa State. National Economic Council meeting reviews fuel subsidy palliative disbursement. And on the foreign scene, investigation begins in aftermath of Johannesburg blast. Hello and welcome to Trust News Update. I'm Darshan Hussein Usman. And we begin with health, where following the death of at least six people, mainly children from a strange disease discovered to be diphtheria, Kaduna State Government has ordered emergency action to stop further spread of the disease. Twelve others hospitalized following the outbreak of the disease in Kafancheng, Jema'a local government area of Kaduna State. A statement signed by the Chief Press Secretary to the State Governor, Mohammed Shehu, said that the diphtheria disease occurred in three wards of the local government area, including Takao, Kafanchang A and Kafanchang B wards. Shehu explained that the disease broke out two weeks ago after some residents started exhibiting symptoms of all symptoms such as difficulty in breathing, high fever, cough, general body weakness, sore throat and swelling of the neck. The statement said that the index case was a four-year-old boy whose illness started on July 4th but died after 48 hours while five out of 17 new cases later died within the three words of Jama'a. Twelve others are presently on admission in the hospital. Following the loss of lives in the affected communities, Governor Obasani has directed the State Ministry of Health to send an emergency team to investigate the cases and ensure the movement of affected cases to adequately equipped hospitals for proper management, action contact tracing and intensive community sensitization in all affected communities and surrounding areas. The government of Kaduna State says it is ready to address issues of social injustice, inequality and other social vices bedeviling mostly women in the state. The deputy governor, Hadiza Sabuwa Baladebe, revealed this at a meeting with stakeholders in Kaduna. She said the state has since created a social intervention office to support, coordinate and implement social intervention programs to support the vulnerable and poor population in the state. The report. Women and children, especially in rural communities, are always vulnerable to social injustice, inequality, and lack of access to opportunities like their counterpart in urban areas. Myths and other harmful cultural practices are some of the factors that hinder women from engaging in some gainful activities that would better their lives. At this meeting, which seeks to address such challenges vulnerable women and children face. The Deputy Governor Hadiza Balarabi emphasized that the seven-point agenda of the state government will address some of the challenges hindering the development of women in the state. Kaduna State Government is committed to addressing issues of social justice, promoting equality of opportunities, and protecting the human rights of citizens of the state. In keeping with these commitments, the government has sustained budgetary investments in the social sector, leading to the expansion of healthcare access in undeserved uh, areas and increased enrollment in primary and secondary schools, which are now free and compulsory in all our public schools. He says the state government is ready to collaborate with relevant partners to uplift the standard of living of the citizens of Kaduna State. As a government that believes in partnerships and collaborations in achieving our development agenda, we remain open and receptive to working together with organizations like Action in Nigeria to achieve our shared objectives. With women in southern Kaduna areas set to suffer inequality and other gender issues, the stakeholders here harped on the need to address some of these challenges. What inheritance perpetuated an unjust cycle, denying women their rights to autonomy, lastly, full disability cast a cloud of uncertainty over daily life. We started in Southern Kaduna. 
the first operational zone of the local health program, where communities are faced with numerous economic challenges, lack of basic social amenities, denial of education, right to the girl, the girl, the girl child, child labor, teenage pregnancies, and so on. According to stakeholders, some of the ways to address the vulnerability of women is to equip them with skills and the conducive space to better their lives. Bella Musa, Trust TV News Kaduna. Residents of Adamawa State are lamenting the hike in the price of firewood and charcoal following the ban on tree felling by the state government. According to them, a truck of firewood that was recently sold between 50 to 60,000 naira in the state has hit 80,000 naira. Silas Lawang has the report. Since the announcement of a ban on indiscriminate tree felling and burning for charcoal in the state, the business has been badly hit. As a result of the new development, not only the lives of the firewood loggers, charcoal producers and sellers are affected, but the end users as well. The price of fuel, foodstuff and transport have all gone up and now charcoal. Government, please have mercy on us or we have done anything wrong. Both the loggers, the charcoal producers and the buyers are all low-income earners. Government should have provided an alternative before introducing the ban because masses are suffering. Before the ban on felling trees for firewood and charcoal business, households depended on it due to its affordability. However, the case is no longer the same as such affordability has vanished into thin air following the hike in the price of charcoal. Actually, the business is no longer playing. We don't cut down live trees even before the ban. However, our major worry is what the government want us to do. Look at how difficult life is. We have our immediate families as well as relatives who depend on us to feed. Seriously, our life as Nigerians are faced with a lot of challenges. They said should not cut down life trees. But even at that, we are not safe. We face series of harassment from security agencies. The state government said the ban was to avert deforestation that had been found to cause extensive flooding around the state. Meanwhile, stakeholders are calling on the government to subsidize cooking gas or provide an alternative before imposing the ban on the charcoal production, which was largely used by low-income earners. A trunk of firewood that was sold between 50 to 60,000 naira and a bag of charcoal, which was 2,500 naira before the ban, has now hit 80,000 naira per truck while charcoal per bag is between 5,000 to 6,000 naira, depending on the location. Silas Lewin, Trust TV News, Yola. Governors of the 36 states of the Federation have agreed to deploy cash rewards to residents of the estates. The governors are advising the federal government not to devolve distribution of such remedial measures through the social welfare register developed by the Buhari administration. The governors met on Thursday at the level of the National Economic Council, which was presided over by Vice President Kashim Shatima. Kendi Amodu reports. The hardship being experienced by Nigerians seems to have multiplied since the removal of fuel subsidy. This National Economic Council meeting has agreed that the best way to attain this objective is to deploy cash awards to citizens depending on the capacity of each state. But Anambra State Governor Chukuma Soludu clarifies that the cash awards will not be distributed through the social welfare register developed under the Buhari administration which has been found to be lacking in credibility. Now, what we have put out here about what a menu of things that will encourage the tiers of government to implement in accordance with their respective fiscal space and fiscal capacities. 
the federal, the state, and the local government. And what did highlight as well? The governors are also hinting of the possibility of a new minimum wage, which Ogun State Governor Dapo Abiodu explains will fall under medium and long-term plans. But in the short term, Governor Bala Mohamed of Bauchi State says NEC is backing the release of grains and distribution of fertilizer at various levels. We also talked about uh, ensuring that we paid our public servants outstanding liabilities, whichever way, if it's their pension, if it's their gratuities, uh, if it's their leave bonuses, and so on and so forth. Um, and, and that is a front burner item because we believe that this Im would really bring succor to our people. And the council has directed the states will be allocated immediately substantial portion of food items, grains, and so on and so forth for distribution so that the prices of food stock will come down and it will be given at a subsidized rate or at the rate at which it is acquired from NEMA. As far as palliatives are concerned, NEC has suggested a six-month cash award policy for public servants to ease their living and transportation expenses. But in the short term, the council says food items, including grains and fertilizers, will be distributed by state government at a subsidized rate or at no cost at all after it has been disbursed by the Central Bank of Nigeria, the Federal Ministry of Agriculture, and the National Emergency Management Agency. From State House Abuja, Kende Amodu, Trust TV News. The organized labor in Oyo State has warned of an imminent indefinite industrial action if issues bothering on its welfare are not urgently addressed. The group made the call in Ibadan during an emergency congress to address matters affecting the welfare of its members, especially with the increment in the price of petrol. While addressing newsmen, the chairman, Nigeria Labour Congress in the state, Comrade Kayo Day Martins, said the unions feel the excruciating pain of Nigerians in the face of the fuel subsidy removal with a clarion call on government at all levels to put the interests of the ordinary Nigerian on the front burner. Labour wants authorities there to address issues bothering on salary deductions, palliative for workers, continued payment of pensions, formalization of recent promoted state workers, and continued payment of retired workers' gratuities or risk a total shutdown from July 24th. The effect of subsidy remover, as is being done in, over, in all other states, the cost of living has gone up, and it has really made life difficult for the entire masses. As of today, we can tell you that workers find it difficult to, to resume at the respective offices because of the financial hardship. So we demand that all these things be done between now and Monday morning. Otherwise, we can no longer guarantee industrial harmonies in the states. You see, an NLC, we have made our position on this known properly. We were never against the mover of first subsidy, but we were saying that while you want to do that, there must be consultation and on how it will be done in such a way that it will have um, imam face to it. In such a way that it will not make life very terrible for people. Just 48 hours ago, it was 500 naira. Today now, it is 600, 700, and the, the prices are going up. So we were not against first subsidy remover, but we have asked the government, let's come together to see how life will be better for the people why you do what you want to do. <laughs> You're watching Trust News Update, coming up after the break. Why street begging worries Sokoto Cleric? Stay with us. How do they come to Nigeria? They have to come through Nigeria Republic.
welcome to News Hour on Trust TV. The coalition of northern groups, CNG, Petition has followed consultations and meetings. Hello and welcome to the News Hour on Trust TV. I am. Where do they get what? How do they survive? Kidnapping is just an extension of catch wrestling. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. If you're just joining us, you're watching Trust News Update. Here's a recap of some of our top stories. We told you that Kaduna State Government directs emergency action on diphtheria following death of six children. You also heard that firewood and charcoal price go high in Adamawa State. Now moving to security, Kaduna State Governor Senator Ubasani has commended the troops of the Nigerian army for their gallant efforts towards degrading and eliminating criminal elements in the state. This comes as the troops on Thursday eliminated bandits in the Kagarko local government area of the state. During the clearance operation, the troops flushed out bandits from their hideouts at Kagarko Ichi, Takalafia, Gidam Makira and Jangala communities all within Kagarko local government area. Governor Sani lauded the bravery of the troops in flushing out bandits from their hideouts in Kagarko, attributing the successes so far recorded to increased surveillance and coordinated action of security forces. He, however, reiterated the resolve of his administration to forge partnerships with security forces to tackle the current and emerging security threats in Kaduna and its surrounding areas, stating that increased cooperation between the Kaduna state government and security forces is already paying off. Street begging is the act of seeking arms from random people on the street. In Sokoto State Metropolis, the menace of street begging has become so rampant that beggars are found almost in every corner of the metropolis. This has led to stakeholders to seek alternative means of livelihood for the beggars who have become a dent on the image of the metropolis. The report. This menace has dented the Muslim religion and falsely projected the impression that the religion permits and gives room for begging in Nigeria. Dr. Sain Mehula, a renowned Islamic scholar in Sokoto, says Islam in its entirety has condemned the act of street begging. Uh, many of Al Majri's, the street beggars today, are trying to uh, strengthen their argument with the fact that their root is that of the companions of the Prophet that are called Muhajir, and that's the root word of Al Majri because the Muhajir. But when Allah talks about Muhajir, He said they do not ask anyone persistently. Allah single out that. A particular attribute of them that they don't ask anyone and Allah praised them upon that. Also the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in many of his hadiths condemned begging part of which he said whoever asks people to accumulate more wealth will have so so portion of punishment on the day of judgment. A popular human rights activist in Sokoto, Ibrahim Tudundoki, says one of the consequences of street begging is that it has now become a fertile ground for recruitment of these young beggars in the streets of Sokoto into banditry and other social misdemeanors. And take care of their all the duties the parents uh, is, uh, is supposed to give uh, to their children, but uh, they give back to them and they, they throw them to the street. And that is why in Sokoto you see now the issue of banditry, the abandoned children become a fertile ground, the training, I mean initiating and uh, uh, recruiting bandit and uh, all other bias in the society. So it's something that is, 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 is so disturbing. Dr. Mehula further stressed the need to clear all misunderstanding as well as the stand of Islam and the teaching of Prophet Muhammad, peace be unto him, on street begging by Muslims. 
It's almost consensus of the pious predecessors and the scholars that street begging or whatever form of begging uh, uh, is, is condemnable, is, is wrong, and is un-Islamic. Islam encourages us to go for uh, hand work and whatever we can do, smart work, hard work, whatever we can do to earn sustenance. That is why in the Quran, all the prophets and messengers of Allah that were, were, were narrated to us, Allah will tell us that this is what they do as a part of sustenance, of looking for sustenance. Also the companions of the prophet, also the pious predecessors, the scholars among them, all of them will have a particular uh, career, a particular uh, place where he looks for sustenance but not begging. For Ibrahim Tidendoki, government and all the relevant stakeholders in Sokoto State as well as other states in Nigeria, the street begging has become so rampant and should put all hands on deck to bring it to an end and in place penalties for parents that shy away from their responsibilities of proper child upbringing. And, and, and if you look at it, even the case of Usman Buddha, the, who, who caused it, the genesis of it, if you dig the, the genesis of uh, the cause of the crisis, is because of a beggar. Yeah, you know, he's begging and he responds and says, on the Islam, and uh, you know, from there it ignites some uh, crisis and complete, uh, 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 you know, worthing. And it leads to the death of uh, Usman Buddha. So it's, it's disturbing. The, all stakeholders need to come together and do what necessary because we know that it's on Islamic. Studies have shown that even when these beggars are provided for and are taken away from the street through proper rehabilitation or via legal enforcement, one tends to still encounter them on the street again as the act has somehow become a lifestyle. Abdurrahman Umar, Trust TV News, Sokoto. Most streets in Makudi, the Benue state capital, are in a sorry state during the rainy season. Jimmy Adzande reports that residents are worried that if Governor Hyacinth Alia fails to act fast, many communities will be cut out from the rest of the state capital. The report. Whenever it rains, Makudi streets and roads in the state capital become death trap for motorists like this popular new Otupo road. <laughs> this is a situation in many other areas, as explained by some residents of Makodi. Especially during rainy season. If you come to Makodi, the few streets that are tied, they are already spoiled. I don't know what the government is doing. Because Makodi, as a metropolitan city in Benin State, you need to have standard rules that even the road contrasted in Makodi don't have standard. I think that's why when it comes to rainy season, water will, will spoil everything. Because Makodi is in a valley. So if you are building a road where it is a barrier, then you should know the standard you are giving to that road. The road has been bad for so long, and government is not giving much attention on them. Government has neglected the local roads especially the feeder roads in Makodi. And when you see, you will see that during rainy season, you will find it very difficult even to move from other uh, parts, even within the state. Because if you see the condition of roads, they are very uh, deplorable. Some of the residents are, however, hopeful that Governor High Centralia will give the state capital a facelift. It is very, very bad. Where rents well, you will never, you will not be able to at least trip to some places because of the past, bad portion of the some of the road. And what I believe, the government of Hassent area, and in cooperation with the government of Tinubu, will set everything in order, and Benue State too will look as if it's a state capital. Apart from the flooding, some streets are now dead traps due to total neglect or substandard construction in the past. Jimmy Azande, Trust TV News, Makodi. The House of Representatives at Thursday's plenary took steps to stop the planned electricity tariff hike by distribution companies. Consequently, the House urged the National Electricity Regulatory Commission not to approve any increase in electricity tariff in Nigeria. 
This followed the adoption of a motion moved by Aliyu Madaki from Kano, who recalled that Disco's recently alerted customers of a planned electricity tariff hike hinged on the multi-year tariff order. Madaki noted that the circular issued by Disco's stated that effective July 1st, 2023, there would be an upward review of the electricity tariff influenced by fluctuating rates. Ruling on the motion after intense debate and loud voice vote in its support, the Deputy Speaker Benjamin Kalu, who presided over the plenary, referred it to the Committee of Power when constituted, saying it was a utility. On the foreign scene, less than 48 hours after an unexplained Johannesburg blast, police and emergency teams are still coming through the scene. On Thursday, the public was being urged to stay away from the site of the incident so as not to hamper the investigation. One man died and at least 48 people were injured after an explosion ripped open roads and flipped vehicles in the heart of South Africa's biggest city, authorities and emergency services said on Thursday. The course of the blast at the Wednesday evening rush hour in downtown Johannesburg remained unclear. An investigation is underway as city authorities brought in specialists to determine what other underground pipes or cables there were in the area and if there was a threat of another explosion or gas leak. It's not about looting. It's about um, keeping this scene sterile so that people, they mustn't interfere here. And who knows? Uh, should we have a secondary explosion, then we may lose life. So we are trying to can keep people out of this area and to allow the experts um, uh, who will be coming to work here so that they can work and rehabilitate the place or declare the area to be safe before we can allow people to can roam around here. And finally, in sports, Super Falcons goalkeeper Chiamaka Nadozie is adjudged the best player following her side's nil-nil draw against Canada on Friday morning. Nadozie, who captained the Super Falcons against the Olympic champions, put up an impressive display in the encounter played at the Melbourne Rectangular Stadium. The goaltender denied veteran forward Christian Sinclair from the sport five minutes after the break. The Paris FC star also made a number of crucial saves in the keenly contested encounter. Randy Waldrum's side finished the game with 10 players after Deborah Abiodun was sent off in, relegation, in regulation time. The Super Falcons will face Australia at the Brisbane Stadium on Thursday, July 27th. And with that, we've come to the end of Trust News Update. Don't forget to follow us across all our social media platforms. I'm Darshan Hussein Usman. Thanks for watching.